Brethren in Christ, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is Timothy Flanders with Immediative Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to Pope Benedict Vindicates the Trads. This is a series about trads for trads, discussing the life and teachings of Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, a.k.a. Pope Benedict, and how his life and his teachings vindicate the traditional movement, as it is understood in the modern period post-Vatican II. Today's topic, Cardinal Ratzinger vindicates the SSPX. This is going to be a continuation of the discussion that we began on Monday with on the Terror of Demons morning show about the concept of the Paschal mystery, looking at um, the SSPX work here, the problem of the liturgical form. This is the, this is a, a 2000. This is a, a text from about the a 2001, actually, the English text. Um but today we're going to talk about how does Cardinal Rassiger actually respond to this specific this specific text. And he actually vindicates them in an interesting way. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, we'll also continue the discussion. The last um, installment in this series was about the fundamental rupture of Vatican II. And so it was about throwing out the documents and how that happened and how that's a fundamental rupture in the historical reality of Vatican II and how it happened. That needs to be faced up to, um, to in order to uh, realize and uh, understand how we can even get continuity out of something where we literally throw things into the trash. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, before that, I want to invite everybody to join the Guild Family Stream. That the Guild Family Stream is when we talk about all our controversial topics. We also get, you also get access to the the Guild community which is an online community of Catholics supporting one another against the Marxists worldwide. So I, we are going to talk about E. Michael Jones's uh, article, The Synodality's Hidden Ethic Grammar, which talks about Joseph Ratzinger's role at Vatican II, synodality and how that relates to the synodality of today. Uh, we'll be discussing this article. I was going to do it a couple weeks ago. I just I couldn't, uh, couldn't make it work. So we will be doing that on the Guild stream soon. So access the guild stream at patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic. As always, if you can't afford, can't afford to be a part of it, $5 a month, no problem. Just contact us, meaning of Catholic.com slash contact, and we can get you to be a part of the guild, even if you can't afford it. So no problem. All right. So we're going to look at, first of all, the whole, you, 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 if you're not familiar with the whole controversy of the Paschal mystery, Go back to the Terror of Demons morning show on Monday at about minute 16 is when we start to talk about that. Uh, so that's the idea of the Paschal mystery. That is the whole structure of this text, which is critiquing this concept of the Paschal mystery. And I want to first recommend the spirit of the liturgy. I don't actually have the dust cover for this book anymore, but uh, this is the spirit of the liturgy. This is Joseph Ratzker's main text on the liturgy. And this actually came out in the year 2000. Um, when was the French text of the SSPX? Well, the French text says it was 2001. Um, but it, it, it's interesting that the spirit of the liturgy very much seems to be a defense of the concept of Paschal mystery. Uh, he goes into the typology to a great degree of all the different aspects of the liturgy and the Passover. And, uh, there's a lot of theological depth here. Um, Joseph Ratzinger is very much more of a theologian of the liturgy rather than getting into the nitty gritty of uh, was this prayer or that prayer legitimately changed in the Novus Ordo or not. He doesn't really get into those things as much. He, he speaks a lot more in these broad categories of theology of the liturgy. But what he says, in fact, ends up vindicating the concerns of the SSPX. What we're going to look at today, I'm just going to read these two different quotes. This is from this text, which is Joseph Ratzinger's Collected Works, Theology of the Liturgy. And this is from a lecture that's contained in this volume. Um, and this lecture was delivered in July of 2001. And in this lecture, he shows that he, he has read through the SSPX's critique, and he actually responds to it. First of all, he talks about how there has been a serious push by Catholic so-called theologians to appease the Protestant heretics 
especially in their heretical denial that the mass is a sacrifice. This is one of the central errors of Martin Luther is that he believed that the mass as a sacrifice was an abomination. The, the very idea that he would say that is itself a, an abomination, but that was Martin Luther and the other Protestant uh, heretics, their, their own heresies was denying the mass is a, is a sacrifice. And so before, during, and after Vatican II, there were all these Catholic theologians from the Northern European countries who wanted to appease the Protestants to basically say, ah, you were right, actually. You were right. The mass is not a sacrifice. And so there was all this uh, effort to um, appease the Protestants, to essentially deny the dogmas of Trent, deny that the mass is a sacrifice, deny that the mass is a propitiation, deny all of these things. This is the concern of the SSPX, is that they're using this concept of Paschal mystery to actually undermine the dogmas of Trent. And so in this in this uh, lecture, Joseph Ratzinger, um, he, he quotes, for example, uh, Stefan Orth. Here's what he quotes from Stefan Orth. So this is Joseph Ratzker quoting a Catholic heretical type of theologian. It says this. Actually, I don't know if Stefan Orth is, is Catholic or not, but what he says, here's what Orth says. Many Catholics, quote unquote, many Catholics themselves today ratify the verdict that the conclusions of Martin Luther, who says that to speak of sacrifice is the greatest and most appalling horror and a damnable idolatry. This is why we want to refrain from all that smacks of sacrifice, including the whole canon, and retain only that which is pure and holy, end quote. Um, so this is the this is the efforts of Catholics. This is really such a critical aspect of the liturgical debate. So what is Here's the first quote quotation where um, where Lefebvre vindicates the SSPX. So here's this is from this is from this volume again, uh, collected works of Joseph Ratzker, five page five forty four. Okay, so here's what he says: Only against this background background of the effective denial of the authority of Trent can one understand the bitterness of the struggle against the allowing the celebration of the mass according to the 1962 Missal after the liturgical reform. So he's saying there's all these heretical theologians inside the church who are pushing for the Novus Ordo in order to undermine Trent. Now, isn't that interesting? Because Pope Francis just said to us in Traditionis Custodis that people are using the Latin Mass to undermine Vatican II. Well, Joseph Ratzker is actually saying something that's sort of opposite. He's saying people are using the Novus Ordo to undermine the Council of Trent. Wow. That's like that's every that's the whole concern of the SSPX. That's what, what they've been trying to say for so long, and what they said in this in this document. Ratzinger goes on: the possibility of so celebrating constitutes the strongest, and thus for them the most intolerable contradiction of the opinion of those who believe that the faith in the Eucharist formulated by Trent has lost its validity. So Ratzinger is saying there's all these heretics in the church who want to abolish the Latin Mass. Not so much because they hate the Latin Mass, but because they hate the dogmas of Trent. These heretics in the church hate the dogmas of Trent. So therefore, that's why they want to abolish the Latin Mass. Ratzinger says, only against this background can we understand the bitterness of the struggle against the Latin Mass. So Ratzinger thinks the whole reason everybody hates the Latin Mass is because they're heretics. They don't like it. They, they deny Trent. So this is this is a big admission, I think, which vindicates the whole concern of the of of the SSPX. They've been trying to have the Latin Mass for decades at this point. This is the year two thousand one, and Ratzinger says, "Well, it's because these are these heretics who hate the dogmas of Trent. That's why they hate the Latin Mass, and so it is today. That's the way it is to this day." Andrea Grillo and the other heretics who uh, out there. Um, who have a definition of the liturgy, which is at odds with the Council of Trent. They want to undermine the Latin Mass, and so they have done so again with Traditionis Custodis. So, Light ZZ10 says hello, welcome. Hey, um, let's continue. Now, look at what... Uh,
Now here, however, we need to, as I said before, we need to distinguish in, in the previous broadcast on Monday, we need to distinguish between antiquarianism on the one hand, which is what Martin Luther did. He said, hey, I can read the New Testament in Greek, so therefore I can translate it in a way that's at odds with the Latin. That's This is contained in my, my first book on the Bible. That's antiquarianism. That's cherry picking something from the early church to support your heretical views. That's what antiquarianism is. It's making it look like you're restoring something from the early church, but in fact, you're just using it to justify your heresy. So that's what antiquarianism is. Shout out to Joe Boturf. What's up, brother? Um, so antiquarianism on the one hand, but then there is actually resource them all. That's an actual thing. That's real. That's a good thing. So, for example, all of these Greeks fled the Mohammedans in the east, or after the fall of Constantinople, all these Greeks came over to the west, and they taught Greek. So Erasmus published the first Greek New Testament in, in centuries. Uh, this is a resource amount that, to recover the Greek language, to recover the Greek New Testament. That's great. That's, that's fine. We just need to do so in a way that is, is in continuity with what immediately came before, not to overcome it. And that's, this is the whole issue with Vatican II. Now, let's look at what Ratzinger says explicitly in response to the SSPX. So this is moving on to page 548 in this text. Now he talks about, um, he, he goes through a lot of theology and he talks about how when you understand the Paschal mystery properly, you understand Passover properly, you understand that Passover is a sacrifice. It's impossible to create a, a an opposition between the Paschal mystery and sacrifice because the Agnus Dei, Quitolis Peccata Mundi, what is it? It's the Paschal lamb, which is sacrificed. It's a sacrifice. There's just no way you can really make this like the modernists want it to be if you know what Passover is, if you know what the typology is. And so Ratzinger goes into all these things during this lecture, and uh, he refers to his text, um, Spirit of the Liturgy. He talks all about the Passover and the temple and this, and how this is all the sacrifice. So he, and then he, he, talks about how this sacrifice and Passover are the same thing. And then he talks about the SSPX. He says, I mentioned this particular, this peculiar opposition between the Passover and sacrifice because it is the structural principle of a book recently published by the Society of St. Pius X, claiming that there was a dogmatic rupture between the new liturgy of Paul VI and the previous Catholic litur liturgical tradition. This rupture is seen precisely in the fact that everything is to interpret it now on the basis of the Paschal mystery instead of Christ's redeeming sacrifice of atonement. The category of the Paschal mystery is said to be the soul of the liturgical form, and this very fact become, appears to be proof of the rupture with the classic doctrine of the church. Now, here's, here's Ratzinger's admission and vindication right here. Here's what he says. Plainly, there are authors who provide occasions for this misunderstanding. So he said, yes, you're right. He's they the SSPX cites all these authors who are trying to oh they're trying to do antiquarianism with the Paschal mystery. They're trying to take the Paschal mystery and use it to undermine the dogmas of Trent, which is what Ratzker alluded to a couple pages earlier in this lecture. So it is true. Now, what Ratzker does not say, which I wish he would have said, he says it in other places in a similar sense. But there is actually the rupture, and this is what the this is what the SSPX brings out in the study is that. Uh, you can't have resource them all if you literally rip out this collect, like the, the the one I read from on the show on Monday was was the um, the liturgy for the precious blood. So the collect in the in the liturgy of the precious blood was completely destroyed. It was thrown into the trash, and a new one was written. Well, that's not that's not resource them all. If you're gonna resource them all, you're gonna add to that. Well, the way that the church does that is it keeps the old tradition and it just adds a new one. That's resource them all. That's what, uh, for example, another example of resor true resource them all is the Vulgate. St. Jerome's Vulgate is a resource them all because they have the existing, at, at the time, there's this debate between Augustine and, and Jerome in the 400s, later 300s, 400s. 
where St. Augustine has the old Latin text, the old, the so-called uh, Vetus Latina, the um, old Latin Psalter, the old Latin Bible. And it says, we have to keep this. And Jerome says, well, we need to add this new textual knowledge that we have to, with the Vulgate. We, uh, we've got more Hebrew knowledge. We've got more Greek knowledge. Let's add more to this Latin Vulgate. And what does the church do in that case? It doesn't throw one out and, and bring the new one in. It actually just keeps both. So the liturgy itself has elements of the old Latin Psalter and the old Latin text of the Bible, whereas the church also approves the Latin Vulgate. This is this is something that we, again, we go, if you go back to my book, Introduction to the Holy Bible, we talk about this in detail. This is how the church tr does true ressourcement. It takes, takes what was immediately there and then it just adds more. It doesn't rip out what came before and replace it. That's what we had with Vatican II when they threw out the last documents, added new ones. And that's what we have with the Novus Ordo. We ripped out the things that were offensive to the Protestants, added new things. That's not resourcement anymore. So Ratzinger vindicates the, the SSPX by, by stating plainly, plainly, there are authors who provide occasions for this misunderstanding. Okay. So therefore, I, what he's saying is plainly the SSPX has a point. Great. That this So therefore... We shouldn't just throw the SSPX in the trash and they're, you know, they're crazy schismatics either. That's ridiculous. What does Rassiger say? He takes a, a very balanced view. Now, here's where Rassiger criticizes the SSPX. Here's what he says. That's, this is continuing on in the same passage. Yet to anyone who looks more closely, it is quite obvious that it is a misunderstanding. For the expression Paschal Mystery unambiguously refers to what happened in the days from Holy Thursday to Easter Sunday, the Last Supper as an anticipation of the cross, the event at Golgotha, and the Lord's resurrection. In the expression Paschal Mystery, these happenings are seen synthetically as a single coherent event as the action of Christ. And this goes back to the original, the beginning of his lecture, where he talks about how the definition of the liturgy by the Second Vatican Council is the action of Christ, the priest, and his body, which is the church. So it's an ad, the action of Christ, the Paschal mystery, is the action of Christ, his passion, death, and resurrection, and ascension, which is all, as 1 John says, destroying the work of the devil, who is, uh, of whom Pharaoh is the type. Pharaoh is the type, the typology of Pharaoh, or the Pharaoh is the typology of, of the devil. Um, the Red Sea is the typology of baptism. Uh, the slavery the physical slavery is the typology of slavery to the empire of death, as St. Paul says to the Hebrews. So this is what Ratzinger, and I think, I think we can concede this as trads. We can concede this. I think we can concede, hey, this is an aspect of the atonement, which is being resourced. It started in the 1850s. They had uh, new critical editions of the Greek and Latin fathers. They're still publishing the, uh, so the Patrologia, Graeke and the Patrologia Latina. There's also the um, Patrologia Orientalis. That's actually all of the Syriac. The Syriac in particular is the, one of the biggest traditions that has not been mined. Syriac, also Ethiopic, Armenian, uh, Coptic, etc. Those are still being published. So we're, we're, we're restoring a lot of this patristic knowledge, and that's a good thing. That's what St. Thomas Aquinas did. He, he took more patristic knowledge that they had. They had more Aristotle than they did before. Um, so the bottom line is uh, there needs to be ressourcement, not antiquarianism. And I think that's where the SSPX critique is a little bit weak, is it doesn't make that proper distinction. But nevertheless, it is making this important point, and Ratzinger admits that. So that's all we have today. Uh, I got one question here from Yaya97. Can I attend an SSPX chapel? Yes, you may. The Vatican has clarified in various ways and various times uh, that you can attend and you can commune at an SSPX chapel. Uh, there's actually a, I have a video with all the sources for that, but yes, you can. Um, the SSPX is Catholic, but they are in a canonically irregular situation. But you can hear mass at an SSPX chapel. You can commune. You can tithe even, they say. Uh, so even according to the, the Vatican officials, um, you can do this. So once again, uh, we'll, be follow we'll be talking about E. Michael Jones's uh, article as soon as I can, probably week after next. Next week, I have to go to Chicago for the Mass of the Ages, episode two premiere. Uh, so I'm thinking it'll probably be 
week after next we'll actually have that guild stream but that guild stream is coming again if you want to join the guild patreon.com slash meaning of catholic and then we'll be talking about uh the fellowship of saint anthony tonight um uh, which is one of our our groups within the guild and uh we've been really uh blessed by that group and thankful for uh what god has been doing among us in that so uh we'll be sharing about that tonight so stay tuned for that uh for now let's pray the, the i'm going to be praying some eastern prayers this will be the the eastern prayers for pascha for paschal tide let's pray in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen christ is risen from the dead trampling down death by death and upon those in this tomb is bestowing life christ is risen from the dead trampling down death by death and upon those in the tomb is bestowing life christ is risen from the dead trampling down death by death and upon those in the tomb is bestowing life in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. And I just have one more question here before we close out here from Suzanne. Can I commune with the Novus Ordo? Um, yes, you can certainly commune with the Novus Ordo in principle, because the Novus Ordo is a valid mass, which has been promulgated by ecclesiastical authority. Uh, however, there can be issues with the Novus Ordo, which may not usually do not appear at all in terms of communion at a Latin mass, as long as it's a Latin mass um, approved by ecclesiastical authority and local bishop. Um, the Novus Ordo can sometimes be sacrilegious. It can sometimes be um, it can even sometimes be invalid if the priest is heretical in various ways. And, and um, so. If you have to go to a Novus Ordo, you, you can either find one that's really reliable or try to check out with the priest, try to check out um, the mass. But unfortunately, a lot of Novus Ordos are sacrilegious. They're iconoclastic in various ways. And that's very unfortunate. That's the reality that we live in. But uh, in principle, yes, you can commune with a Novus Ordo. It is valid. Uh, it's a valid mass, of course, and uh, would confer sacramental grace as normal. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. If you have any questions, feel free to comment um, and send me a contact, meanofcatholic.com slash contact. Suzanne says, can I expose my soul to errors? Um, I'm not sure what you mean exactly by that. So send me a contact, Suzanne, and we could talk more, meanofcatholic.com slash contact, or you can comment below. All right. God bless everybody.